again, I, I keep going back to my business because my business is me. I, I'm, I am, you know, if anybody asks me what I am, I'm an engineer. And I mean to and through. I haven't gone on vacation yet and not looked at the framing or looked at the metals or, or a million other things as I go through it or, or the mechanics, you know, depending on what I'm looking at, you know. So I am engineer through and through, but my business is me too and through too um, because it, it, it's an expression of who I am. Um, along those lines, one of, the, one of the key ingredients that I'm trying to build our business on is the genius, the genius mastermind. So what, what that means is every person Okay, from the guy who cleans the toilets to the guy who drives the garbage truck to you know to an engineer to a doctor to a physicist to everything in between, there's something they're a genius at, and they're going to be better than everybody in the room. Okay, now I don't necessarily know what that is. Okay, but in our company we're trying to bring together a bunch of people who each have these unique talents and leverage those talents to be make this company and the team more successful, okay? So what that means is we, you know, it doesn't mean that we're like pigeonholing somebody and like, okay, you, you are my steel guy. And you, you are my guy. That's not what it means at all. What it means is each one, each one of them has an area that like they really grasp and they, they, they can share stuff that I don't know, and I can share stuff that I don't know, you know, that I, that I know that they don't know. But we can use those pieces together in order to multiply our effect. So I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of a mastermind, but a mastermind is you put, you put multiple people together, you know, four or five, ten, you know, whatever, whatever the size and different masterminds have different purposes. So, so it doesn't matter what it is. But, you know, in the simplest thing, it's, you know, two people. So in, in our engineering world, one and one, what's that equal? Two. I that one. Right. But in the mastermind world, one plus one equals ten. Because you're taking the strong points of these two ones and you're putting them together. So they multiply on each other. And that is where we're, we're aiming to build a genius to build a genius mastermind that, you know, maybe genius, I know it has a negative connotation to a certain extent, but to build a genius mastermind that is going to give us 10 extra results. I'm all for redefining or just clarifying terms. Like, I'm just a little bit the clock, I'm just like to learn something. Right? Yeah. Oh, I'm an educator, I'm learning something. It's like there's specific. It's a clumpy, clumsy word. It's like you have to get the, be able to observe it, you need to be able to comprehend it, you need to be able to retain it, recall it later, and communicate it. And to be a learned person, there's steps. So I, think, I read something the other day that is changing the way I communicate, and actively because it has it was such a little glip. Um, it was two sentences, and it, it it's already changing the way I communicate and will, I will continue to strive to make get better at it. But, and I don't remember who, the, who to attribute the quote to, I can find out if we need to. Um, but the quote went, do not write to be understood. Write to not be misunderstood. Now, wow, they like the same statement, right? No, not at all, not at all. So important to me. I spent the better part again. Project started as a complaint. I'm a, gra I'm a grad student. I'm an undergrad student. I'm like, this sucks. It should be better. There should be a map of your mind. Well, good luck with that. Right? I tried to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, a loved one not all that long ago said, "All right, stop explaining. Just we get, you know, just if there's a problem or if there's a." Opportunity should be self-evident. People will sign their own things. Don't, don't explain so much. Just start doing more. It was, I might have the nail on the head to the full intent once, but it was, I get caught sometimes in being very long-winded and trying to like explain, but then there's this nuance and this and this, and it's just like, you could have yep. just said it in two sentences too. Yeah, and you have to be, you have to be cognizant. You, whenever you're speaking, you've got to speak to your audience. 
okay? So if I go to my kid's fourth grade class, which I'll be doing in June to do, to do a, a, um, you know, a career thing, I'm not going to be like, you know, if you, if you do engineering, you know, you're going to need to be really strong at calculus. And you're going to need to do differential equations. You may not use them a lot in your thing, but you're going to need to know it because it's the foundation of how all things work. And, oh, by the way, when you're doing, when you're making steel, you got to know the chemical analysis because if, if it doesn't have enough, you know, manganese in it, it's going to be too brittle. Did I, did, do you think I'm going to have their attention? This is third grade basic stuff. They should be exactly. able to speak Exactly. We got to say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer. And you, you see that roof up there? That's what I do. What do you mean that's what you I keep that from falling on your head. You know, I, I've been taglining our company as, you know, we battled gravity so you don't have to. And to me, that is what I do every day. And I battle gravity and it's like such a major challenge. I mean, you know, and, and the good thing about it is there's always job security. Because gravity ain't going anywhere, just in case you didn't know, at least... At least if it does go anywhere, we're not going to need to worry about it. So, so I have a job until the earth explodes. Okay, So we're doing things that are, are not obvious. And we can break them down. So when I'm speaking to a client, and, and this, is, this is challenging because this is very hard, you need, you need to keep your audience in mind. Now, you have clients who are really up on their terms, Okay, that really... Have a, a, a basic grasp, understanding of what you're talking about. You have clients that have no clue what you're talking about, think they know what they're talking about. You have clients that have no clue about it and know they have no clue about it. You've got, you've got people in the middle. You have clients who have talked to the other firm, and the other firm has filled their head with garbage. You've got all these things. So what you need, you're, you know, first thing I'm trying to do, you know, it, it's, you know, they always say, you know, when you go out and you meet somebody. It's not about deciding them deciding if they like you. It's about you deciding if you like them. Um, and, and, it's, and I don't mean that in that blatant of a statement, but you need to, you need to be sizing them up because you need to know how that's going to go. I know often from a first initial visit how complex a certain per, uh, client's going to be because they're not necessarily going to you know, understand it and they're going to misunderstand what I try to get them. Or if I miscommunicate something in a in a simple way that they're going to interpret it, the, the um, you know as <laughs> vernacular often is in the industry, the common man's way, you know. So the so you have to always be thinking about that. So I'm always I've always been writing to be understood, but I haven't been writing to not be misunderstood, and that is going to improve what I've done and avoid issues. So. That's what you're doing when you're talking to, to an audience. You have to be speaking so they don't misunderstand you.